I would never compromise my sexual integrity. That's a direct quote from the second undercover operator from the RCMP invited to testify as a crown witness in the trial of Chris Carbert and Anthony Olenek here in Lethbridge, Alberta, in the courthouse behind me. Robert Kreitschik reporting for Rebel News. Even though this entire experience in its totality has been incredibly unfair, in my opinion, to the defendants, I do believe that they are getting as close as you can to a fair trial in the moment right now. And so the most shocking thing for me and my experience here is that it's actually given me more optimism and hope in the system than I otherwise would have expected. Chris Carbert and Anthony Olenek are both charged with conspiracy to murder. The Crown is accusing them of conspiring to murder police officers in the context of their participation in the 2022 Coots protest and blockade. Also, they're being charged with unlawful possession of firearms for a purpose dangerous to the public peace and of causing mischief inducing damages of over $5,000. Anthony Olenek is uniquely charged with unlawful possession of an explosive device for a purpose dangerous to the public peace. And this Coots protest and blockade of 2022 was adjacent to the Freedom Convoy of the same year with the two demonstrations sharing in common civil disobedience and peaceful protesting in broad opposition to all of these governmental edicts and orders and decrees marketed as public health measures to reduce transmission of COVID-19. Lead prosecutor Stephen Johnston asked this second female RCMP UCO whether or not she used romantic tactics that's an exact quote, as part of her investigatory processes. She said no, although that term, romantic tactics, was not defined. We didn't receive any sort of parameters as to what constitutes that sort of tactic or what falls outside its range. She also said that she would never violate her sexual integrity. Now, sexual integrity also was not defined. At one point, at one level, what type of behavior constitutes a violation of this so-called sexual integrity? We don't know. She also said that Anthony Olenek, quote, was prepared to die. She also said that he regularly used terms like war and revolution in describing the events as they were unfolding, and that he was anticipating a violent confrontation with police officers. Here's a quote. He was fearful that cops would come in between 3 and 5 a.m., and she said that he was preparing for this sort of violent conflict. Another quote from this second female RCMP UCO in her testimonies that she said about Anthony Olenek, quote, if cops came in assaultive, they would be met with a greater force. I'm here with uh, George Jansen. You folks will recall him from the Coots trial, this uh, alleged leadership of the Coots blockade and demonstration of 2022. Now, George, you're here in Lethbridge, Alberta. You're outside the courthouse with the trial for Chris Carbert, Anthony Olenek. Why are you here? What's your motivation for attending today? Um, yeah, well, just to support uh, Anthony and uh, Chris for the same reasons we went out to Coots, I guess. Uh, support them for standing for what's uh, right and for what's true. And so we're just here to support them. A commonality between the second female RCMP UCO's testimony and the first is that both acknowledged that they did not use digital recording devices as parts of their investigation. In other words, they did not use body cameras or on-person mics to collect evidence when they were operating as undercover investigators in the context of the 2022 Coots protest and blockade. That also includes any sort of secretive or surreptitious placement of a recording device at a site of investigatory interest. For example, this smuggler saloon, this restaurant in this Coots village of 250 people was a regular meeting spot for all the protesters and demonstrators, also a lot of the police officers that were there in order to warm up, to eat, to just congregate. And there were no cameras or microphones placed in there by the RCMP to collect information so all of the evidence being provided by these two undercover female RCMP officers is based on their own note taking, their own claims, their own statements without any video or audio evidence to corroborate what it is they're testifying to. So I'm here with Alex. Alex, is it fair to call you an interested observer of these proceedings? I would say that's fair. Now, Alex, you were talking to me a moment ago about a major takeaway that you had 
from the previous day's proceedings. Alex has been here for at least two days. So why don't you share with the audience uh, what your observations were? What do you think they should know about what you've seen in the courtroom? So yesterday we heard from one of the undercover officers who said that there was no video recordings, no audio recordings, and no real-time surveillance. And what I find odd about that is that it suggests that the RCMP put a young, inexperienced woman into a very dangerous, as they allege, situation in which there were many men with a cache of weapons. And so in a sense, the RCMP actually put their officers in the same vulnerable situation that they're accusing the defense of. And there's a certain level of hypocrisy to that that's worth pointing out. The second RCMP female UCO that began her testimony today operated in the same manner as we saw with the first female UCO from the RCMP that was invited as a Crown witness. So she testified in a courtroom inaccessible to members of the public or the news media. In the courtroom with her were the judge, the prosecutors, the defense attorneys, the jurors, the defendants, and the courtroom staffers. But the rest of us, we were in a separate courtroom, so we could not observe her, we could not see her, but we could listen to a live audio feed of proceedings, which of course focused on her testimony. If there are any sort of physical exhibits, we can't observe those either, but again, the entire time we're listening to proceedings, and insofar as it's possible, the prosecutor, judge, and defense attorneys will describe things that may be of a physical nature. For example, body language or some physical piece of evidence or exhibit. You also shared some remarks with me earlier about your observations of the judge, Justice David LeBron. So what have you observed about him? What's your, uh, what's your judgment telling you? Uh, I think that he's a great judge. And even though this entire experience in its totality has been incredibly unfair, in my opinion, to the defendants, I do believe that they are getting as close as you can to a fair trial in the moment right now. And so the most shocking thing for me in my experience here is that it's actually given me more optimism and hope in the system than I otherwise would have expected. The first female RCMP UCO completed her testimony today, which included cross-examination by Catherine Bayak, the defense attorney representing Chris Carbert. Here's a quote from this female undercover officer. Half the stuff I say is not lies. Allowing observers or the jurors to make inferences about what constitutes the other half of what it is that she's saying. And she made this statement in response to something Catherine Bayak said. And here's the quote from Bayak. You're trained to deceive those you interact with. And this statement came as part of a broader theme of Catherine Bayak's line of questioning, which suggested that deception and lying and dishonesty is a permanent feature, a requirement of being an RCMP undercover officer. Here are some quotes. This second female RCMP UCO said that Anthony Olenek would talk about how he didn't like cops, that cops should all be hung, and that his comments regarding police officers reflected disgust and disdain. I'm just, I'm remembering something now that sort of unifies this trial with yours. And it is the absence of any direct video or audio evidence provided from the RCMP via the Crown in the context of these charges. So in this trial, an undercover female police officer said that no recording devices were used in terms of being on her person or placed somewhere in the place of the demonstration. So basically, no body camera, video or audio evidence, no microphone evidence. That was the case also in your trial. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I mean, it's a lot of the same things for us. Uh, we were being charged for being leaders, per se, and then finally at the end, they ended up changing it to where we encouraged others to block the highway. And there was no evidence that we were leaders in the same way, even though there is a lot of accusations going around, there's not a lot of video ev evidence or proof that these things actually happened. And just as with the previous female UCO, the second female UCO was maintaining her anonymity. This entire shielding process in which the public cannot access the courtroom within which she is testifying is to protect her identity given the nature of her job. Anthony Olenek was the main target of testimony from this second female RCMP undercover operator who testified today. Almost all of the statements that she made, all of her testimony revolved around what she said Olenek told her 
in conversation in the context of this 2022 Coots protest and blockade at which she was working. And now just a last update in terms of your trial or your sentencing, that's coming up at the end of July, right? That's correct, yeah. July 22nd is when sentencing begins. I don't know how the whole process works, but that's where it all begins, that's for sure. Any final thoughts or remarks for the audience? Yeah, well, thank you very much, Rebel News, for covering these type of things. We definitely appreciate it, and thank you for the support. We at Rebel News think this trial is of deep importance, and it's worth reporting on, which is why we're investing a lot into producing this original journalism and reporting. And of course, operational costs come with that. Now, I'm not living five-star lifestyle out here in Lethbridge, but to get here from Ottawa it does require airfare. Got to get a car rental, got to get accommodation, consumables like food and gas and other things. So we depend on our audience to keep this journalistic enterprise going because, as you know, we're not getting payouts from the federal government, and we're basically demonetized from the digital tech platforms. So, folks, please help us out. Let us keep this project running. Visit truckertrial.com and stay up to date with our ongoing coverage.